Because life has no reset button, think, think safety. 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 Well, rational drug design actually uses a lot of, say, new, what I call either 20th or 21st century techniques of actually looking at the actual structure of a protein here. Uh, specifically, I was talking about the neuraminidase. This has been done in, I guess, the late 90s, where they actually sequenced and uh, identified the, uh, the actual protein structure. And then through molecular modeling, and computer graphics came out with a 3D structure and then designed something to actually fit into the pocket of this, of this protein, which is highly conserved, the neuraminidase. Yeah. The virus has, uh, all right, has a two surface proteins, the hemagglutinin and the neuraminidase. The hemagglutinin attaches to respiratory cells and the respiratory cells have little ciliated membrane uh, or um, proteins and uh, at the edge of these are sialic acids and these sialic acids actually bind the hemagglutinin of the virus and allow for the attachment and infection process to begin of that respiratory cell. So the sialic acid is necessary for the virus first to infect the cell. The, the virus goes through a replication cycle, produces all these new progeny virus, thousands of new virus particles, and now they're trying to burst out of this cell that has become now a factory for new virus particles. And the cellular debris is the remnants of the sialic acid are really impeding the process of these new viral particle, virus particles to, to remove themselves from the cell and to be able to infect more, more uh, respiratory cells. And it's the hemagglutinin now on these viruses, which are uh, new virus particles, which are attached to the remnants of the salic acid, how they first got in. So it, they're, they're trying to get out, but they're stuck to the debris of the, the remnants of that cell. And it's the other surface protein, the neuraminidase, which basically cle clips that bond, that little strand attachment, and then frees the, the new virus particle uh, to allow its infection process. And it's the antiviral drugs like neuraminidase inhibitors which stop that process. And so you see that pre and post infection electron micrograph of showing the virus particles sticking to each other very much and I use that analogy like 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 velcro because I think it 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 really you know you know uh, it explains it very well well I I, I was trying to also um, state very much what the other manufacturers have said with vaccine production is that you just don't turn on a switch and get out more product. In today's day and age of, of you know, uh, with inventories and uh, raw materials being held at, you know, minimum amount of capacity and also um, the efficiency of production, I'm sure our company is very much like others, that it's, you know, when one product is made, you campaign, clean up, and then you start making your other products and you have certain uh, schedules and timelines and, and to think that you'd just be able to you know, turn on the switch and have all this new product coming out all at once is unrealistic. It's, it's, it's not going to happen. That's not the reality. I'm sure things could be adjusted. You could expand production times and, and all. But in order to face a crisis, which people are talking about at this meeting, at something at a global scale, it's not just a short, a little increase. We're talking about huge increases. And that, 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 that's really not being realistic. And I think that's what the company's trying to state, is that we need to plan in advance. But everyone is stating that here, even the, the vaccine manufacturers.